Hollywood blockbuster movies usually contain a couple of key ingredients, a hero or two, a love interest and some bad guys. The Martian, based on the best-selling novel, is out next week. It has a hero, but there aren't any villains and there's no big romance. Science, however, plays a major role and the film's leading star, Matt Damon, hopes it might inspire children around the world. The actor portrays astronaut Mark Watney, who's presumed dead and left behind on the planet. I spoke with Matt Damon earlier today. Matt Damon, congratulations on the film. Thank you. How unusual is it to star in a film where there's no big love interest, no bad guys, and you're pretty much on your own? Uh, very unusual, actually. Um, and that was one of the things that I, I loved about it. I figured it was going to be a big challenge. Normally, I, um, you know, kind of everything I do, you, I prepare, I do research and get ready and figure out the character, but then it's really all about what the other person's doing. So this, this, was, a, this was an interesting challenge. There must be some kind of way out of here. Okay, so let's do the math. I have enough food to last for 50 days. He's going to starve to death long before we can help. So I'm going to have to science the shit out of this. He's 50 million miles away from home. He's totally alone. What the hell is he thinking right now? I am the greatest botanist on this planet. There's no audible swearing in this film other than that one famous scene where Mark Watney says he's going to science the shit out of Mars. I don't want to sound like a prude, but it's such a nice change from the usual big release from the United States. Yeah, you know, um, I think I didn't realize until I started making movies and got a little older and had kids and, and looked back on some of the movies I did, how much swearing <laughs> there actually was. And, and I don't want to sound like a prude either. You know, I remember Good Will Hunting, when we wrote it, they, uh, Miramax came to us and they said, you know, it would be great if we could release this as PG-13. Um, and we said, yeah, it'd be fantastic. There's no, vi there's no violence. There's no, you know, this is a movie everyone should see. And they go, yeah, but there's a lot of F words in it. And, and you can only have two, uh, and then you become rated R. And we said, okay, well, well, uh, so kind of, what would we have to do? And they go, well, you, you missed the cutoff by 145. So uh, when are you done with those meetings? I think the week after I'm 21. Yeah, they're gonna hook you up with a job or what? Yeah, <laughs> sit in a room and do long division for the next 50 years. Yeah, probably make some nice bank though. I'm gonna be a lab rat. Better than this shit. Way out of here. I think there's something about where I came from or how I talked growing up, I guess, that, uh, that um, you know, kind of loaned itself to that. But, but I am, you know, now that I have my own kids and, um, you know, I think there, there are certainly ways to express yourself without talking that way. Um, sometimes you have to and sometimes it's, it's good and it's proper dialogue, but, um, but, I, but I agree. I think I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little more refined in the way I speak as I get older. Science and ingenuity are the big stars in this film. What kind of impact do you hope that this has on kids right around the world? Well, you know, when I, when I first met the screenwriter, Drew Goddard, uh, he, he said he wanted this movie, he did it as, as a love letter to science. And, um, and, and that really came through in the script. And, 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 and I hope, I mean, you never know kind of what the reaction will be to a movie. You can only kind of make the thing that you, you know, you can invest in it because, because you love it. And, and uh, but I, I would love if one of the takeaways from this was that it got people excited about about science and uh, and 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 all kinds of people. I mean, it's a very uh, kind of diverse group of uh, scientists and astronauts in the in in the movie. And um, you know, Jessica Chastain is our commander, and 10% of our astronauts are women. Um, and in this, you know, we've got two out of the six are are, are women: Jessica and Kate Mara. And and so that, so that feels good too. I, it feels like hopefully uh, kids today could watch it and if they're excited by it, say this is the kind of thing that speaks, speaks to me and, and, and that I could pursue. Science helps your character overcome the odds. Great discoveries and cures cost a lot of time, patience and money. Do you lament the fact that governments these days pretty much consider that space costs too much, that money has actually trumped discovery and curiosity? Yeah, and also just on a practical level, I mean, it really is a necessity for us to get some of the species off of the planet, off of our one planet. Um, just given, you know, the capacity that we have 
<clears throat> to do damage. And, you know, I mean, we're kind of, we're one extinction level event away from wiping humanity off, you know, out of the universe forever. And so, you know, sooner rather than later, it would be nice or would be important for us to get, um, to, to, to start colonizing other, other places so that, so that we can carry on. There's a big push in Australia to make math, science and innovation the key to our future. How would you make them more appealing to kids? And I'm thinking too of your character in Good Will Hunting. He didn't like the idea that he was considered a nerd. Yeah, yeah, and uh, right, and, and, and I think this movie, The Martian, is kind of a celebration of nerds, <laughs> so, um, and I'm proud of that, I, I, you know, ha having been to uh, the Jet Propulsion Lab and met these people who are, who, are very, who are kind enough to dumb down their speak when talking to someone like me, um, it's, it's pretty clear that uh, where we're going really depends on, on these folks, and so it's, it's good if, if movies can, can elevate them, not demean them. Do you have a Jason Bourne in custody? Yes, I do. Listen, he's an agency priority target. I understand. Last question. The Bourne franchise of films were really popular here in Australia. You're reprising that character, Jason Bourne. The last film was about a decade ago. Is he older, wiser and greyer, or is he jaded and worn out? He's definitely older. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, yeah, no, he, you definitely find him in a, in, in a, in a, in a play. It's a continuation of that story. Um, but, as you say, it's over a decade later. And... Um, and so it's where you find the character, you know, where he is in kind of his own, that kind of journey, that kind of the born mythology, kind of where, where he finds himself and, and, what, and, and, and what he has to do to kind of get to a better place. It's kind of a classic born movie. Matt Damon, thank you. Thanks, Abra.